<sighs> Here we go again. Just another day in my boring life. Just another day at my boring job. Just another day in my boring home. I decided I was gonna go outside for a walk around the block. And there, I saw my neighbor Jared. Jared had it all. Beautiful home, perfect family, and even a cute dog. When I saw Jared, he asked if I wanted to come inside for a coffee. I felt obliged to say yes, so I did. We walked inside his home, and while we were entering, I saw this thing, this thing by his front door. And I wasn't exactly sure what it was, so I asked, Jared, what is this? He said, oh, that's just my smart doorbell. He pushed it. It lit up, a chime went off, and he got a notification on his phone. Curse that, Jared. I'll have a better smart home than him in no time. Today, I'll share with you how you can start your very own smart home in 2023. I'll give you some of my learning lessons and mistakes that I made along the way so that you don't have to make them as well. If you guys are new to the channel, my name is Chris Horm, and I started my smart home journey three years ago and I didn't know what smart home platform to choose from. I didn't know what smart doorbell to pick, and that's why I'm making this video today, so that you can fast track your expedition to creating your very own dream smart home. So, without further ado, let's dive into the video and I'll show you how to start a smart home in 2023. So the very first thing that we need to talk about is which smart home platform should you use? So that's the ecosystem that you're gonna be running your entire smart home based off of. So your options are Amazon Alexa, Google Home, or Apple Home. So my recommendation, I'm gonna break it down for you more simple than any other content creator on the internet has done. If you use an iPhone like myself, I'm gonna recommend that you use Apple Home. And if you use an Android phone, I'll recommend that you use Google Home. The reason for my recommendations like this is because I want you to have the most seamless, cohesive ecosystem possible. That means that when I hold my side button and I activate Siri, that I can control different things in my smart home because I'm in the Apple ecosystem already. And on the contrary, if you're in the Google ecosystem, just use what you're already using. It'll make things 10 times more simple for you. And you may be asking, Chris, why aren't you recommending me using a a Amazon Alexa? And my recommendation behind that to not use Amazon is because they don't have your best interest in mind. You're not gonna get the overall best experience when you use the Amazon platform because they're trying to sell you things. The other two aren't trying to sell you things, you're just a user in their ecosystem. Amazon is always trying to upsell you on products. They're gonna sell your privacy and data. And overall, you're not gonna have a good experience. It's super important that I talk to you guys about this new thing in 2023 called Matter. It was released in October 2022, and it's the unified smart home standard that all major ecosystems and all major platforms are adopting. So previously, all of these smart home products spoke different languages. There was about six to be specific. So you might have one device that you buy from Best Buy, and you might have one device that you buy from Amazon, and these devices wouldn't talk together because they speak different languages. Basically, Matter is the unified smart home protocol that uses Wi-Fi for connection and thread for connectivity for have devices to talk to each other and work together in one cohesive ecosystem. But when you're buying smart home products in 2023, you're gonna wanna look for this Matter supported logo. That means that it's gone through the Matter certification process and it'll be compatible with any ecosystem you choose, whether that be Google, Amazon, Apple. All right, so we touch base on which ecosystems and platforms you should start with. So what do we need to start our smart home? Well, you're gonna need your smartphone, which you already have. You're gonna have your voice assistant, which is basically the platform that you're gonna use. So we already touched base on that. And then you're gonna have your third thing, which is gonna be your very first smart home product. So let me tell you which smart home product you should start with, and then we can go from there. So the answer is you get to choose your very first smart home product, whatever's gonna deliver most value to you. So I can't tell you what's gonna give you the most value, but here's some recommendations and just some ideas to think about. If you can never remember if you shut your garage door, get a smart garage door opener. If you always leave your house on the way to work and you forget to adjust your, your thermostat and it's costing you money, get a smart thermostat. Or if you're like me, I started with a smart bulb. I just wanted to add some ambiance to my home and get some cool colors and some cool lighting and that I can control from my phone. So my very first smart home product was the Philips Hue Starter Kit, and that got me started on my entire smart home journey. So keep in mind that this is gonna be a journey, not a destination. 
We're continuously building and building as the years progress and we're getting more smart home products that are adding value into our life. So that touches base on the first smart home product that you should choose. Let's talk about overall use case scenarios for our smart home and how we want to control it. I tell people that they should do three main things to control their smart home and these three things are pretty much all requirements non-negotiable for my smart home. So they need to have three different aspects that I can control and that's going to be physical touch, it's going to be phone control, and it's going to be voice control. Let me give you an example. I think the easiest way to think about this is using a light switch. We're gonna have a light switch. The old standard fashion light switch is an on off button, so that's gonna be your physical control. We wanna keep that because when we have family members or guests come over, we want them to still be able to control the light switch just like they normally would. We don't wanna make it a more inconvenient smart home than what we would already have. That wouldn't make sense. So we'll have the physical switch and that'll control the physical aspect of the smart home. Then we're also gonna to wanna to have the voice control aspect. So we wanna be able to control it via our voice assistant. In my case, it's gonna be Siri. So, hey Siri, can you turn on the light for me? And Siri will be able to control that and will access it via our voice. So super cool futuristic thing. And then the last but not least is that we wanna control it via our phone. We wanna be able to toggle on and off the light using our phone and run automations and routines based like that. So now let's dive a little bit deeper into which products you should choose from, which brands you should check out, and what are my overall recommendations for your smart home. I've been doing this about three years, so I have some pretty good trials and tribulations for which products are good, which aren't, and which brands you should just generally avoid. Let's go category by category, and I'll give you my recommendations. As I talked about, lights were the first thing that I started with. And I chose the Philips Hue starter kit, and that's been working out really well for me. So in terms of lighting, I use Philips Hue, and then also I really like Govi. Govi has a lot of different product options for ambient smart lights, but they have just the basics as well as light strips and smart bulbs as well. So check out those two brands if you're looking for specific recommendations. Next, I'm gonna talk about smart thermostats. You're gonna to wanna to check out Ecobee for their smart thermostats as I think they do the best job and they have the overall most compatibility with these products. Next, if you're looking for a smart garage door opener, check out MyQ. They do a great job on smart garage door openers and they're owned by Chamberlain, which is the gold standard of garage doors. In terms of which smart switches should you use, I recommend everyone go the Lutron route. You may pay a premium like I mentioned, but the premium experience is definitely worth it. When we're talking about smart plugs, I recommend you go with TP-Link. They have the cheapest options, but they are very reliable. So they'll cost you about $12.5 per smart plug, which is definitely a good bang for your buck. Next, let's talk about security and surveillance. So Eufy is the gold standard, in my opinion, for smart home surveillance. They have great outdoor surveillance cameras, they have great indoor surveillance cameras, and they have great smart doorbells. So overall, you're really gonna enjoy the whole experience with Eufy, and they're compatible with major smart home ecosystems. And last but not least, let's talk about accessories. So accessories may be the last thing that you get into your smart home, but they're really gonna make your smart home work for you and make your life more convenient. The two brands that I wanna talk about today are Akara and SwitchBot. So I'm in both of these ecosystems. I use Akara for their motion and contact sensors. That means when I walk into a room, I'll have the lights just automatically turn on for me using a motion sensor. Or if I open or close a door, we can have actions happen based on that. As well, SwitchBot does a great job in retrofitting existing home products and turning them into smart products. So they started by doing it with a light switch. They had a little robotic hand that would turn on and off a light switch, but they've gone far more than that now. They have the SwitchBot lock, which retrofits existing doors. And then they also have the SwitchBot curtain, which allows you to robotically open and close your curtains, which is super cool. I really love SwitchBot and I also love Akara. They're great products, they're relatively inexpensive, and they give you the most bang for your buck. This is a good point to talk about reliability being the most important aspect of your smart home. Rather than focusing on costs, which I think some people may turn to at first, I, I mean, I've done it myself where I've just focused on costs. That's a mistake that you should avoid when starting your smart home. You should focus most on reliability so that you don't have an unresponsive error, which is the dreaded no response in Apple HomeKit. So what that means is that we wanna have a bulb that's reliable, always on, and we can count on for a long lasting good smart home experience. When you go the cheaper route, you may get that no response. It may die in half the time. You may not have the full product features that you were hoping for. So that's why I always push to have a premium experience and you might have to pay a little bit more for that and that's fine. 
But let me just give some more final thoughts on smart homes in 2023 and how to build your dream smart home. Remember, this is a journey, not a destination. You can go one product at a time and just continue to build and build to add value to your life. Your smart home journey is all about what you wanna do and how you can add value to your very own smart home. You can follow a process that someone else is doing, but just continue to build and add value to your life and that's my best recommendation for how to start a smart home in 2023. I hope you guys got some value out of today's video. Again, my name is Chris Orm. Chris Orm's the name, smart home is the game. Thank you guys for watching today. If you want more content like this, subscribe to the channel. And if you want a little bit more personal involvement with me, follow me on Instagram. I'm posting their daily smart life content. And if you want more videos like this, feel free to click one of my other videos. And thanks for watching today. Really appreciate it.